Welcome to the world's first Tesla Model Y performance track test and what just might be the world's fastest SUV. All right, everyone, this is Sasha from Mountain Pass Performance, and this is your brand new Model Y Performance. One of the My first ones. Model y oh, your, oh, his wife's, I apologize. His wife's brand new Model Y Performance. And it was one of the first ones delivered in Canada? Yes, yep. We ordered it like right when the ordering process opened. Okay. So we got one of the first ones in Canada. We went for the uh, Stormtrooper spec, white on black, which looks pretty amazing. And <laughs> you've already put some mods on it. Obviously, your company, Mountain Pass Performance, makes performance parts for Model 3s, yeah. which this is very closely related to. Right. Mechanically, is it identical underneath? Very, very close. Okay. Yeah. So we've had, we've been developing this, you know, since we got it and kind of this is now our, well, yesterday was our first time on the track with it. Yeah. And you had a heck of a day, didn't and you? Yeah. So we got to try all the parts and they worked pretty well. Man, I can't believe it. He did a 117.2 in what should have been a street all-wheel drive class car, although they bumped you up to super street because the tire sizes were slightly wider than spec for street class. Right. Uh, but you would have set a, a record in street class and even in super street class, I assume you still won the class? No, we were third. You there were third, okay. There was the okay. turbo Porsche. Okay. And there was that turbocharged uh, all-wheel drive converted Integra race car. Oh, okay. Luigi's race car. Yeah. So like a 600 horsepower all-wheel drive Integra and a 911 GT3 RS? No. Uh, oh, turbo. the Turbo S. The Turbo, turbo S. S. Wow. 991 Turbo S. But you did beat a 991 GT3. Right. Non-RS version. Yep. That's kind of astounding. My, my brain hurts thinking about that. I'm... It was really funny to see the car on track because it's like twice the size of these RX-7s and Corvettes and Porsches. And a, and a fair bit heavier, too. Yeah. This weighs, what, 4,400 pounds? 4,400 pounds. And right. those cars are 1,000 pounds less, maybe, or more? More than that, yeah. It's insane how much performance you've managed to get out of it. And we should state this is not a stock Model Y anymore, is it? No, it's you not. You put some development parts on it. Yep. The most not noticeable of which, of course, are the TE37s yeah, in egg they're, blue. They're beautiful. 20 by 11s, I think you were saying? We fit 11s all around, yeah. 11s fit under this thing with a 285, 35, 20 Trofeo R, which is like a spec tire a spec, for... Spec tire for that time attack event. So that's right. one thing you can... You know, all those cars were on the same tire. So right. levels of playing field for sure. Yeah, that's a good point. He wasn't cheating with a, with a faster tire. Mm -hmm. And you also have your big brake kit on the front here? Yep, so it's got our stop tech mountain pass big brake kit. And then we've got our front upper control arms, rear control arms, so we can get the camber we need to yep. get the most out of these, these big boys. Yeah. And yeah, we've got our coilovers on there that we've been developing for a while. Okay. And they're actually like a street coilover. They're designed just for comfort. Okay. And you turn them up to full stiff and they still hold their own. So It's amazing. And you're just running a Stoptech Sport pad, not yeah. an especially aggressive nope. pad. Street pad, but There's yeah. still a lot of performance left in this car if you really wanted to make it a race car. Yeah, I mean, for time attack and just doing three laps, this everyday pad is no problem. Great. You've got a lot of mass in that thermal mass in that rotor, a lot of cooling. Yeah, so it's all you need. It's all you need. And you were saying inside too, you've installed your Motec uh, test unit. Yeah, so it's got our development ECU in there. So we've got shock pots on the dampers, and we're monitoring all the, you know, same stuff we did with the Model Three for the development. Um, and then we've also used that to be able to disable the traction and uh, stability control, which you can play with today a bit. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a pretty decent summary of what we're working with. I don't think there's any chance I'm going to come anywhere close to Sasha 17.2 number. I don't know if he's even going to let me drive it, to be honest. But why don't oh, we, yeah, you're driving it. Why don't we go for a rip together? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, DP? Yeah, man, I'm pumped. This is going to be fun. Yes. I still can't believe you did a 17.2 in this. That's it's is pretty funny. It's an SUV that's like faster than most sports cars, <laughs> let alone other SUVs. It's yeah. kind of in a class of its own, isn't it? It's so, pretty funny. Speaking of which, uh, maybe we'll do a little launch here. What do All I right. do? Do I Hit just it. like... Go full throttle? No, you just... That's all you do? I don't have to, like, load nope. up the motor and get the turbo spooled? No None spooling. That? All right, here, no let's, let's yeah. go. Oh! Oh, <laughs> my God! I just made myself nauseous. The blood <laughs> came yeah. this way in it my does legs. make you nauseous, I know. Holy cow, that's fast. That is amazing. It's a terrible idea for someone like me who tends to get motion sickness, but... <laughs> Wow, it's on a 285, it wants to tram a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, we're gonna maybe tow in the front of it so it doesn't do that. Okay. Wow, but the acceleration is brutal. Yeah. So much faster that's than where your... you get the That's where you get the lap time, is in the straightaways. Wow. I mean, being 4,400 pounds, I'm gonna have to brake earlier than I do in my old EG Civic, but. No, just brake, you can brake pretty late in this thing. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's got lots of grip, these though, tires, doesn't it? These tires are big enough that they can handle the load pretty well. Wow, and with these big 285s, the turn-in is really instant. I'm turning in too soon. I'm expecting it to understeer, but it's not wanting to understeer a whole lot. Yeah, just drive it like you drove our Model 3. It's Yeah, there you go. You were going to run over the apex again. It's got a good bit of grip. Wow. 
And I see what you mean by needing to unwind the wheel a bit yep. to uh, to get it to go to full and then power. Smash the curbs, EP. Yeah? Don't be afraid. Get over it. Oh yeah, you can slide it a little. <laughs> wow. It's a it's a big boy. You can get up on that stuff, wow. man. And then okay. here, you see, it's not yeah, going. It's not going because that's where too I much need to wheel. unwind it. Yeah. Yeah, we need track mode for that. That's and then a, here. It gets a bit sketchy on the brakes. Okay. Doesn't have enough rear arrow. Okay. That's really the only place where the car is kind of like. I would say gets loose. A little loose, okay. Yeah. Just through that dog leg? No, through the, yeah, yes, through the dog leg, yeah, okay. through the braking, just as you come and out. Are you of going the dog out leg. here much? Were I you tried using it, but it, it's really like weird. Does, does how it seem to do camper. much for you? Oh, wow, it rotates there. You a like bit. that? You feel that? That's amazing. Yeah, I know, the balance is really good. You do not expect an SUV to rotate. It rotates nice, man. Wow. A little trail braking, it's really nice. And the brakes are. Yeah, you're really way early powerful. on the brakes there. You can get in later. Wow, really? Oh, I'm bottoming out the rear end a bit on you. <laughs> the wife's SUV. Yeah, you're, the smashing, you're smashing stuff. God, that's amazing. So you were using some curb yesterday, were you? Not too much. I mean, I I didn't. I used curb only in the in the corner two there. Okay. And then into the braking zone in that chicane. Wow. But this thing hustles, man. I it does hustle. It I doesn't feel like an SUV. It feels nothing like an SUV. It's funny because it's not even sports suspension. It's like, you know, you can feel it's soft, but it's still composed. Wow, it really is. It does a good job. You can carry pretty good speed in there, eh? Mm-hmm. So you're later apexing yeah, this and then, around it and then opening it like that. Open like there, that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, okay. Because you got it, like this thing's this thing's got power, so you gotta be able to use it. If you bind it up and it won't give you the power, you lose all that advantage. I hear ya. Okay. Well, Open it up and then, yeah. Speaking of advantage. You want to get rid of me? I guess if I'm going to try for a lap time, I got to get rid of the dead weight here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, DP. Well, we'll bring it in and give it a bit more charge for you then to give you the best shot. Yeah, what are we at now? 73%? We're at 73 and realistically, uh, the difference from 73 to 85 might be three or four tenths of a second. So okay. we may as well try and give that to you. Actually, maybe now's a good time to explain too how out on the track, I'm feeling maybe 400 horsepower because we're at that speed with the motor where that's about what it makes. But on the dyno, you did see a peak of 500. Right, so electric cars, you know, they, they don't have any gears. Right. So they make a certain amount of power and then above that, they start falling off. So at a low speed at around 60 kilometers an hour, 70 kilometers an hour, this makes 500 wheel. Okay. But in all these corners, by the time you got the wheel straight to the point where it's actually giving you full power, yeah. you're going about 100. Okay. And you, you kind of start around 420 horsepower and it starts fading and the faster you go, it gets you know, below 400. Gotcha, so that launch that I did off the start, that was the full 500 I would have felt there. Yeah, so it starts at a set torque and then that become, you know, that'll be 500 horsepower and yeah. then once it eclipses that, it'll start trailing off. Gotcha, okay. Oh, it's rotating in the last corner. That's insane. I also have to be mindful of this whole steering position thing as I come out of corners. It doesn't like a lot of steering angle past the apex. So, on the brakes. Oh, 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 I completely blew that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was optimistic on my stopping distance there. In my, in my defense, everyone, I just got out of the uh, K-Swap S14, which is a much lighter car with mega powerful brakes so I, I I'm having to adapt a little bit to this car now gosh once you get the steering straightened it just wants to go so you really have to play that game of like getting the steering angle just dialed to where it's happy and I am getting a little understeer because I don't have enough heat in the front tires yet Oh boy, Sasha said smash turbs, so I'm smashing curbs. I am definitely braking a little too late though. Now unwind, 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 there it goes. I just, I, I need to remind myself this is a 4,400 pound car. <laughs> Whew, first of all, wow. I'm still kind of blown away by the pace this thing has in a straight line. I mean, everyone yeah. knows Teslas are fast in a straight line, but power. It, it delivers its power so differently than a combustion engine car. It does take a minute for your brain to kind of recalibrate to that. And I completely blew the braking zone in my uh, first hot lap. I only did two hot laps there because 
as you were saying, after two laps, the power starts to drop enough, I guess, that there's really no point in chasing a lap. Could from be. There. I actually haven't tried, but maybe if you feel you, you, you had that big moment in the first corner, maybe if you lost a couple tenths of power, yeah. you know, it's hard to know. Yeah. But if you're going for the last couple of tenths, mm -hmm. then you're for sure going to at least lose that. Yeah. I, I might have lost a second. I over, overshot it so much. Oh, wow. And then I had to really correct. So it was a big boo-boo. Right. And that was my fastest lap. And that was your fastest lap. 118.9. 118.9, which is still pretty fast. It's not bad. I mean, for my only two hot laps in anger in this car out of the box, it's impressive. And I was starting to get a feel for the steering angle issue where if you have too much angle coming out of a corner, it cuts power. Yeah, so it won't give you the power. You can yeah. almost feel like there's an on-off switch there. Yes, that's right. So you're always chasing that a little bit. And then if you if you come in a bit too hot and you need to make a steering correction, it lights you out. You run out of road, yeah. So you really have to be disciplined there. So I can totally see how you got into the 17s. I'm not going to chase that because there's really no point. I'm just going to be beating on your car at that point. But it's certainly there. As a matter of fact, why don't we show you his, lap, his hot lap from CSCS right now? try and break in gently get the car kind of just to wrap around the corner and then open the power and just try and get this thing to to put the power down that we need because that's really the issue that we're having is that the car just will not give us anything at all unless we open the wheel a lot it's the same thing here get it bring it in and then power out you got to open the wheel to get it to allow it to do that so same thing here we're going to try and get it tucked in and then open the wheel and just manage that as best we can. Same thing here. We're going to brake and we're going to wrap it around kind of gently and then open the wheel and get on the power and just use every last bit of the road there to try and get that power to actually activate as early as possible. So here we go, getting up on this curb, trying to get on the power here. Same thing here, just trying to wrap around it, get on the power here. Just got to get that car to get up and go. That's really the main issue here. And then gentle here with the brakes. Get it to wrap around. Get on the power. Open the wheel. And there we go. That's a pretty decent lap. So we'll see what it turns out to be. So that's how you drive this thing properly at the limit around TMP. Wow, I'm 17 too. It's still staggeringly quick. And the important thing to know about this is it's still a really nice street car, isn't it? This is all, all these modifications are done for the street. And uh, I don't want anyone to get the impression that this is tuned just for time attack or for the track. Yeah. Uh, we just want it to be like insanely capable. Yeah. But but without any compromise for road comfort. In fact, the factory car is a little bit rough on the road, so we made it a little bit more comfortable. Really. Than factory, and then with the adjustment that the, the big range that these KW dampers have. Yeah. When we dial them to full stiff on the track, as you can see, it it gives you what you need. It's remarkable. It, there's still in. a bit of body roll. And, but you can smash the curbs, and once it rolls that little bit, it takes a set beautifully. Mm -hmm. And you do feel this car has a really low center of gravity from that right. battery pack. For an SUV, low. a normal SUV would not be oh, able to... Oh, you'd be falling over, yeah. you'd be tearing the outside of the tires off. With that off. kind of ride comfort, you would not have <laughs> that little roll, yeah. And I, well, before I went out, I even said, this doesn't feel like an SUV to me. It feels more like a, like a high-performance sedan, right. a sports sedan. Right, right. All right, Sash, so we're cruising in comfort mode now. Yeah, so now the dampers are dialed back. Okay. And I just wanted a, you know, an honest opinion. We were just on the track talking about all this, and I don't want people to have the conception that oh, this Waddle Y, it's just a race car, it's mm -hmm. been set up for the track. So, you know, like as you're driving it now, would you say that you think it's been modified to make it, like, would you think it's been modified? No, I mean, if I was, if I jumped in it before seeing it, and you know, obviously you can tell it's lowered and on wild wheels and tires and stuff, but like going over the broken pavement there or over these seams. It feels very stock-like, for sure. It, the steering is super responsive, mm -hmm. which is maybe a combination of the wider front tires and just a Tesla thing. I don't know. We've got a lot of camber in it right now for the track. Is that I'm what sure it is? Gonna okay. Feel, you're going to feel it being more tram the road with those tires. Right. But yeah, it's... But uh, the body control and its behavior over bumps seems very, very good. And these roads <laughs> these are... These tires pick up They pick up a lot stuff. of little new pavement there on the side, but... Yeah, it feels fantastic. There's no sign of it wanting to like crash over seams. It doesn't do that like, you know, modified car and coilover is typical thing where like you're... Like that bang, bang, yeah, bang, bang. Yeah, bang all the time. And uh, even with like, you know, a really high quality, say, KW Variant 3, which I've used on a lot of my street cars, 
quite a bit stiffer, harsher than this. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely tuned more for yeah, street Yeah, we, we did our tuning like totally different than I think KW's philosophy, which is usually quite sporty. Okay. Uh, this kit specifically with the Y, we're going for something kind of, you know, catering mostly to comfort. Sure. But obviously because, you know, you know, we're a performance company that needs to be, you know, comp like capable on the racetrack. Yes. I don't, I don't imagine you're going to see a lot of Model Ys at the racetrack, although you might have just changed that with how fast this car Honestly, is Honestly, man, like, you know, if you're going to think, oh, I'm going to buy a Model 3 or a Model Y, and I've got a family, and I want to have some cargo space, but, like, I really, you know, might want to go to the track every now and then. Yeah. Well, it's like, this can do it. It certainly can. And, like, as you saw, like, you know, you did two laps, and you did a time that's faster than lots of cars that have had. Faster than a new Supra. Yeah, faster than a new Supra. That kind of blows my mind. So... That you know, and there really were new impressive. Supras on these same tires at the track yesterday that were slower. So it's not yeah. just the tires. Yeah. So there are, I think there's a potential for people to just say, well, you know what, for going on the track three or four times a year, why am I going to buy the smaller car? Yeah. And then they go with the Y and do take it to the track. So it's, it's certainly possible because it's just a bigger three, really. And it doesn't feel like there's a lot of uh, compromise being made here. Like, I could drive this thing across the continent and be totally comfortable. There's, there's yeah, really no I honestly think that it's it's well, it is for sure softer than the stock is it okay? car with the 21 inch wheels. Like with these 20 inch wheels, there's no doubt that it's softer than the stock suspension with the 21 inch wheels. And we're on a very high performance tire right now. If you put on a more like street tire, you're going to gain even more comfort, yeah. more sidewall switch. Although I can't believe how good these trofeos are. They do ride well, and they're pretty quiet. Yeah, and the really rolling resistance was impressive. Like we have RE71s on there, howling like crazy and. Is that right? Yeah, these ones I was really surprised by how well they were doing on the street. I mean, they pick up everything and make a ton of noise and yes, uh, in terms of what they're throwing in the in the, in fender, the, wheel, in the wheel wells. Yeah, and they need to be hot to work, so they'd be scary in the fall. Yes, but otherwise, yeah. Oh wow, the regen braking. There's a lot of regen. Holy like, cow, it's really heavy itself. regen. Yeah, that is so wild. Yeah, like and you, does it know that that's there? If it was an autopilot, it would. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Because it seemed to know. Like, I just took my foot off the throttle. <laughs> no, that's it... just always a regen you get. Wow. You don't ever need to press the brakes on these cars, basically. Unless so it's when I come emergency. to a stop sign here, do I need to hit the pedal at all? The Only once pedal? you go. Well, there's a there's a hold mode that will go to a full stop. Okay. But in the mode it's in now, it'll stop regening around like 10 kilometers an hour. Wow. Yeah. That's but if really I put cool. it in the hold mode, it'll regen even further, and then it'll actually s switch to the brakes. Like, I actually have to keep some throttle in it just to coast. Yes, yes, yes. Or else you just give people whiplash. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's really cool. It's such a different driving experience than what I'm used to. I'm, I've never spent any time in a Tesla, but I can yeah, see because, why people right, are like, excited about them. Right? right. Like, historically, the gas pedal was directly connected to the engine. Yeah. And it made the car go. And the brake pedal was directly connected to the brake system, and it made the car stop. Yeah. But now... You don't need those two pedals to be totally independent. You can have the gas pedal just, you know, yeah. also be the slowing down control. And I'm sure once you've spent some time with it, it feels natural. It does totally feel natural. Yeah, it's like kind of like when you're in a boat, you know, you let off the throttle on the boat. Yeah. And it's like you're slowing down. From right, the resistance right. in the water, it's the same thing. It's one control. It's a good analogy. Well, my friend, I think you've, uh, you've hit a home run on this because, man, it is a very comfortable, very pleasant road car. I... I Having never tried the stock suspension, I can tell you that this is very comfortable to drive around in, and yet it is insanely fast around a racetrack. So I would say mission accomplished as far as proving the point that you can, in fact, take your SUV to the racetrack <laughs> if you're the kind of guy who wants to have his cake and eat it too, because you can go camping with the family one weekend and go to the racetrack and yep, if beat 911 GT3s. <laughs> <laughs> That's your jam. So. Wow, it's. Uh, I gotta tell you, it's so cool when it's an SUV. I mean, the same lap time in a Model Three would have been impressive. Yes. But with an SUV, it's just it really it was at another level. It, it was pretty awesome. And speaking of it being an SUV, it's also beautiful to look at. I mean, the back of it too. The, the whole backs, thing just oh, looks man. so good. And now that you've lowered it a little bit, you put more, you know, meat wheel and yeah, tire. Yeah, it's got some meat. Yeah. It just looks aggressive. It looks so purposeful, and yet it's truly an SUV in every sense, isn't it? All right, everyone. Well, thanks very much for watching, and thank you, Sasha, and everyone at Mountain Pass for Performance for changing the, shifting the paradigm <laughs> on what's possible with an SUV. Because cool. wow, this thing is truly properly fast, and yet I would say zero compromise has been made here as far as its usability and comfort and SUV-ish utility. So wow, props to you, sir, and props to Tesla for building what is a insanely fast SUV. So if I could afford one, I'd go buy one right now. <laughs> I think. Uh, 
Speed Academy needs another another three million subs before I'm ready. But uh, come on, guys, we'll get there. We'll get there. Man, the reverse camera in this thing is huge. <laughs> I want to keep these racing tires clean, but we got to drive across the dirt to get to the charge station here.